the RUSH exam. It stands for rapid ultrasound for shock and hypotension. Here we can see our student physician is starting with evaluation of the pump. She will examine the heart using the phased array transducer in three different views. The parasternal long axis, which she will rotate to look at the short axis. She will then move to the apical four chamber view and finally to the sub xiphoid view. In all of these views of the heart, she will be evaluating global left ventricular function. To do this, she'll be looking at the mitral valve and ensuring that the anterior septal leaflet is nearing the interventricular septum when the valve opens. She will also be giving a qualitative estimate of cardiac contractility. To do this, she's watching the interventricular septum and the posterior wall of the left ventricle and making sure that they are nearing each other during systole. She's also looking for any signs of pericardial effusion and any signs of right ventricular strain. Essentially, she's ensuring that the right ventricle is the normal size, meaning it's about two thirds the size of the left ventricle. Here she has moved from the apical four chamber view to the sub xiphoid view. She's placing the transducer almost parallel to the examining table in order to get a good view of the heart through the liver. She's now moving on to looking at the pulmonary views. She's watching the pleural interface to make sure that there is sliding, ensuring that there's no pneumothorax or any other fluid collection in this area. She does this bilaterally now our student is going to move on and look at the inferior vena cava. For the inferior vena cava, she's measuring the area of the IVC that is two centimeters caudal to the site at which the hepatic vein connects to the IVC. She's watching as the patient inhales and ensuring that there isn't a decrease of more than 50% in diameter with inspiration. She's now moving on to the FAST exam, examining Morrison's pouch, the area between the liver and the kidney. We can see here that there's a nice mirror imaging showing us that the lung on that side doesn't have extra fluid at its base. She now moves on to the other side, where it's important that she tries to place her examining hand knuckles on the table to get to the retroperitoneal space so she can examine for any signs of fluid collection between the spleen and the kidney on that side. And once again, looking for that mirror image sign of the lung on the other side of the spleen. Next, our student is going to move on and start examining the abdominal aorta. She needs to compress the transducer with firm enough pressure to displace any overlying loops of bowel. She's looking for the shadow of the spine and looking for the aorta just above it. She's assessing the abdominal aorta for any aneurysm, moving from the epigastric region all the way down to the iliac bifurcation. Once she has completed that assessment, she will move on to the suprapubic region of the FAST examination. She will be taking the transducer all the way to the patient's pubic symphysis and looking at the bladder in both the long axis and the short axis view. She will both rock and fan the transducer in order to be able to fully evaluate for any fluid collections or abnormalities in or around the bladder and the other anatomical structures in that area. Then our student will change transducers from the phased array to the linear array. She will use the linear array transducer 
in order to evaluate for deep vein thrombosis. She starts with the femoral vein, looking for the area where the common femoral vein and artery are. She puts enough pressure to collapse the vein fully, getting the nice wink back sign that shows us that the vein is intact. Now she moves to the popliteal area, looking at the popliteal artery and vein, and once again putting pressure to be able to see that vein collapse and wink back. Thank you very much. I hope that you have enjoyed this video.